Okay, good evening, everyone. This is the City of Joliet Council meeting on April 2nd, 2024 at 630 at City Hall Council Chambers. Please call the roll. And, oh, excuse me, before we have the roll call, uh, Pastor Kurt Hoover from Messiah Lutheran Church on 40 Hobolt Road will be doing the invocation tonight. After that, the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I bring you uh, greetings on behalf of the Messiah Lutheran Church on the corner of Hobolt and Jefferson. Uh, we do want to thank you as the, the leaders of our community, and we want to thank our community uh, for their help with Save Messiah. Uh, that was very much a, a time of our, our need, and this, this, the community came through for us. We thank you for that. I also want to bring you greetings from Pray Joliet. It's a group of churches in the community that uh, meet on a regular basis to pray for our community. Uh, they're pretty well publicized. I invite you to know what's going on through the, the church, through Pray Joliet. Um, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this gathering. We pray that you would be with the leaders that gather here this day and all the small things that lead up to this day. Lord, we pray for strength and patience to get through the daily grind of everything that needs to be done, as well as the big moments that we enjoy. Pray for our community. We pray for our first responders. We pray for those who put their life at risk. We pray for the projects of the city, safety on our streets and in the building of, that it requires to build a city. And Lord, we thank you for the work that you do through these leaders. Lord, give them the strength that they need and the, the knowledge and wisdom that it takes to lead. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> now I recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. To begin with roll call, Mayor Darcy. Here. Councilman Cardenas. Here. Councilman Clement. Here. Councilman Guerrero. Here. Councilman Hugg. Here. Councilwoman Ibarra. Here. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Councilwoman Quillman. Here. Councilwoman Reardon. Here. First this evening is a proclamation recognizing Dylan Johnson State Wrestling Championships. Thank you. Proclamation. Whereas Dilbert Johnson, a senior from Joliet Catholic Academy, recently brought recognition to the city of Joliet by winning the 2024 ISHA Class 3A Boys State Wrestling Championship in Champaign, Illinois on February 17th, 2024. And whereas Johnson's victory marked just the third individual state wrestling champ in JCA program history, and whereas Johnson dominated the regional and sectional tournament, placing him in the state finals for the third year in a row, and whereas in the state finals, Johnson won his first match in 39 seconds with a pin, his second match with a minute and 44 seconds with a pin, his third match in 14 seconds. All matches are scheduled to go six minutes. Obviously, he was nowhere close to six minutes and three matches. Whereas, the final championship match was won by another pin in one minute, 58 seconds, and captured the Class 3A wrestling title at 285 pounds. And Johnson finished his career with a record of 143 wins and one loss. Wow. And whereas, head coach Ryan Crumby stated, we will never see another Dillard Johnson again. And whereas Johnson is a member of the National Honor Society, and he plans to wrestle and play football at the University of Wisconsin next year. Now, therefore, I, Terry Darcy, mayor of the city of Joliet, Illinois, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, do hereby recognize the accomplishments of Dillard Johnson and congratulate him for winning the 2022-2023 IHSA 
Class 2A championship, as well as the wrestling championship in 2024 for the Class 3A state champion wrestling match for the 285-pound class. Not officially recognized as the freshman winner of the state because there was not a tournament because of COVID, but he had won the matches there, so he has technically won, in our minds, four times, one of the few from anywhere. Gilbert? Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you all for recognizing my achievement over my career, me and my family and friends. We very much appreciate this. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Great job. One picture. <coughs> yeah. Let his parents come up too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Proclamation and recognizing okay. yeah. April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. <laughs> okay, proclamation. Whereas the Exchange Club of Joliet is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our community. The Exchange Club of Joliet's initiatives include child abuse prevention, community service, youth programs, volunteerism, and appreciation to those who have served our country and community through service in the military and law enforcement. Whereas the Exchange Club of Joliet supports these initiatives through events such as its annual Police Officer of the Year and Firefighter of the Year recognition, luncheons as well as its annual spaghetti dinner, fundraiser to benefit local agencies working to prevent child abuse. Whereas the prevention of child abuse became the Exchange Club's national project in 1979, and since then the Exchange Club has made its mission not only to increase child abuse awareness, but to do it all it can to prevent it. And April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and April 5th is Wear Blue Day to raise awareness of child abuse prevention. Whereas Pinwheels for Prevention is an awareness campaign representing a vision for a world where all children grow up happy, healthy, and prepared to exceed in supportive families and communities. Whereas child abuse occurs across all socioeconomic levels, ethnic and cultural lines, religions and education levels, and is preventable. Now, therefore, I, Terry Darcy, Mayor of the City of Joliet, Illinois, on behalf of the Joliet City Council, ask the Joliet community to join with the Exchange Club of Joliet in recognizing the month of April as Child Abuse Prevention Month and April 5th as Wear Blue Day, and to join in the Pinwheels for Prevention Awareness Campaign, because together we can prevent child abuse. And this is signed by Terry Darcy, Mayor of the City of Joliet. And therefore, that is why I've already started wearing my blue, okay? So we get an early start on this. <laughs> and this is Anne Marie, who's gonna accept the proclamation. Would you like to say something? Thank you. You're quite welcome. I love the nail polish. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh. Yes, all my blue. <laughs> um, I'm Anne Marie Scheiber, president of the Exchange Club of Joliet. And on behalf of the club, I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to recognize April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Um, this is a community issue, and I hope that we can work together to prevent child abuse for the children in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda with the following change? Remove Council Memo 174-24, which is the resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between Heritage Corridor Convention and Visitors Bureau and the City of Joliet for the installation of electric vehicle charging stations. 
Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. <clears throat> Councilman Cardenas. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilwoman Abara. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Citizens to be heard on agenda items. Is there anyone that would like to speak on an agenda item this evening? heard me say it a million times here, you know, about the center point development and stuff, you know. Uh, I think there's got more and more things they need to work out first and everything before they start approving anything else more because there's promises they made that they didn't keep, <clears throat> you know, especially like to the people that lived on my road, on Better Road. They didn't give them their own separate road getting out the swites of road, which, of course, needless to say, made my life dangerous and my, my neighbor's life is dangerous trying to get out of their driveways. You know, I just wish that, you know, safety is more put into the mind here about how much that, all the problems have been caused with Center Point and everything, but then they got North Point going right down their neck too. So I would hope that one day you guys could finally just start getting the sense of valuing people's quality of lives out there. And I don't have to tell the story how much my life has been affected by all this all the development, what it's taken from me. You know, I'm barely holding on to my life right now. I don't, can't find a way to even live anymore. So because of all this development, you know, I've been affected by Center Point, paying my boss off years back. You know, that, that was a bad situation. The, the, turning my road into the four lane semi truck highway, taking the no truck road in the no lane, two lane no truck road and turn into a semi truck highway for just for the trucks to get on there to their inner moles and improve their lives, you know, improve their business. But <laughs> think of one bit about the residents' lives. When are you gonna start thinking about the poor residents' lives? Please, have them work out their things first. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Seeing none, we'll move on to council committee reports, public safety committee report. Okay, public safety met here this evening at 545 with Councilwoman Reardon, Councilman Clement, and myself as the chair. And uh, on the agenda, we had a request for, to pay Starcom user fees. And um, Deputy Chief Botsom was here to explain this. Last year, we budgeted 250,000 for that for a 10 year um, contract, but it's gone up to 30,000. So they'd like to amend the budget 30,000 because now it's 280,000 a year. And so they would ask us to do that, which we passed all in agreement and it hadn't been changed since 2011. But then you look forward to all the every year it's going to increase a little bit more. So when as they budget for the next 10 years, they'll increase that. So in 10 years, when they redo the uh, contract, it'll be all in the budget. And then there's an amended intergovernment agreement between the city of Joliet and the Will County Sheriff's Office for warrant processing fees. And this expired in 2016, and now it's been updated till 2026. Everything's the same, nothing has changed. And uh, we voted on that unanimously to also go to council. And the next ordinance was amend the code of ordinances, uh, chapter nine, section nine, one, through 915. Now this hasn't been updated since 1977. And um, it's been, uh, Greg Blasky was here to update all this and give us a best practices or everything is updated on this. So we're all up to code. Any questions or you want to add anything? Nope. And uh, we all agree to that. He explained everything in detail. Uh, he, he was gonna stay, but I guess he had something else to do to explain it a little further. So. That concludes our report, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> Public Service Committee report. <clears throat> Public Service, we didn't go last this time. Public Service met yesterday, Monday, here at City Hall at 4.30 in the Council Chambers. And on the committee is myself, Councilman Guerrero, and Councilman Mudrin. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep it brief because we've switched back to the old way of doing things in which we... Uh, vet the, uh, the, the different uh, contracts and resolutions at the committee level and, you know, give a recommendation. And then it comes at the, at the next meeting. Today, 
So mo all of these have been mentioned by our city manager, Beth, yesterday. We went through them. So I will say we had 13 contracts. They range from 15000 up to $4.5 million. Um, the $4.5 million one, out of respect for my councilman here, has to do with the ongoing water and sewer improvements that are virtually all tied to the alternative water supply. So we looked at all 13 contracts, which can be found online. For anyone who is interested in more details than we offer up here, you can go and look at, you, you can listen to the uh, public service committee meeting. We don't videotape all the committee meetings, but they are audio taped. So you can look at the agendas and you can look at the votes and you can look at the, 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 the items uh, and listen to them on audio. So you can get more details than maybe we're offering up here, but I'm not gonna go through all 13. Other than, say we, other than to say we did, all three of us look carefully at all 13 contracts and found them all to be in order. Um, then again, we had a couple of change orders, uh, pay estimates and final payments that we looked at. Um, nothing major, one for 21,771 to Van Mack Electric um, for the 2022 electrical you know, maintenance assistance contract. Essentially what happened there is, you might say 2022, because there were things that were found. They're, they're given a certain amount for service, and during the standard service, they find things that need to be repaired or replaced. They're not just simply maintained. So that's how those change orders typically happen. We had two change orders in there, one for 21,700, one for 22,500. And we looked at them very carefully and vetted them and found them to be in order and acceptable. And under ordinances and resolutions, which typically are what we refer to as housekeeping, um, you know, resolutions allowing to give MFT funds to fund the projects um, for street repairs, you have to go through the, the motions, if you will, to formally vote to, to approve to pay for what you want to do under MFT funds and such. So we did look at all of these. Items, one item was withdrawn as was announced by the, cl the clerk today um, for further information to the, to, to the uh, committee. And so we looked at the, the remaining items and found them to be completely in order. So everything except for the one that we withdrew at the beginning of this meeting was unanimously voted on and sent to the full council with the committee's recommendation that they all be approved and they're all on tonight's agenda. Did I miss anything, Caesar or Pat? No. Uh, I would just add sure, with the... Uh, in, in reference here to, it'll be council memo number 173, uh, which is looking at the Route 66 park on, on Broadway Street. So we did have a bit of discussion about that at the committee level. Um, you know, it's, it's been brought up to me by different residents, kind of what the long-term plan is for, for that area. Um, so we did have a discussion with, with staff. Um, I don't believe that Jane Bernhardt is here today, but uh, if anybody else wants to, to chime in here. Um, there, so there, there is talk uh, among staff of what the long-term plan is for, for the area, uh, but I believe there's a need for some direction from us, from the council and the mayor, as to what precisely we, we, we want to do with the park. Um, you know, obviously we have the, the signs that are being updated on the agenda today, but again, we're kind of looking at how, how that park fits in, connects with other green spaces. It's, it's a bit of a, a tricky area because it's isolated and obviously on, on Route 53. Um, makes pedestrian traffic a little bit difficult. So, you know, it's time for, for us at, at the council level to kind of put our heads together and, and decide what direction we want to take this in uh, for a long-term plan. Okay, great. Pat, Evan. Mayor, that's, uh, that's our report. Thank you. Stadium committee report. Okay, so the stadium committee met on Monday, March 25th at 4 p.m. in council chambers. Present was Councilwoman Reardon, Councilman Clement, and myself. Our facilities manager, Blaine Klein, gave a maintenance update. This year's scheduled maintenance includes repairs to the left field concession area, updated security systems, and updated sound systems. Repainting of the structural steel also begins this year. This is necessary to prevent corrosion, which would compromise the integrity of the structure over time. This will likely be a three-year project, which will be done weather permitting. A significant upcoming project is the loading dock area off of Jefferson Street. There has been a sinking subsurface, which has resulted in une uneven elevations on the surface. This needs to be addressed in order to avoid structural deficiencies in the future. We would like to have the project engineering completed this year in order to identify the cost of the project and budget for the actual projects and repairs next year. All of the aforementioned product projects will be covered in this year's fiscal budget. Night Train Vec also spoke briefly about the Slammers management stuff, which is still being assembled, and he is very excited about this year and what it could hold. 
And is there anything you would like to add? I don't think so. Nice job. Um, and I just want to say, Councilman Reardon, Councilwoman Reardon is the former chairman of this committee. And for the record, she's very excited about this year. So thank you. That concludes my report. <coughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to consent I'll agenda, approval of the <laughs> minutes. It's recommended the minutes of the pre-council meeting held on March 18th, 2024, and the minutes of the council meeting held on March 19th, 2024, stand approved as reported. Invoices to be paid. It's recommended this report be approved. Council memo 152-24, 2023 annual city collector's report. It's recommended this report be approved and placed on file. Council memo 153-24, award of professional services agreement for database and GIS support services to Great Pyrenees Technology, LLC, in the amount of $30,000. Council memo 154-24, award of contract for the 2024 bulk polymer purchase to Polydyne, LLC, in the amount of $149,200. Council Memo 155-24, Award of Professional Services Agreement for the Water Loss Control Program to M.E. Simpson Company in the amount of $464,240. Council Memo 156-24, Award of Contract for the Utilities Department Generator Purchase Project to Metropolitan Industries in the amount of $115,310. Council Memo 157-24, award of contract for the Lockport Township Wellhouse Demolition Project to Gould Brothers LLC in the amount of $42,548. Council Memo 158-24, award of contract extension for the 2023 to 2027 Landscape Maintenance Services Utilities Program to Ramiro Guzman Landscaping in the amount of $122,165.62. Council Memo 159-24, award of contract for the 2024 Street Light Assembly Painting Project, Contract A, to Costco Construction in the amount of $76,250. Council Memo 160-24, award of contract for the 2024 Lift Station Replacement Program, Benton Lift Station and Greenfield Lift Station to Aries in the amount of $1,882,000, and amendment number one for construction engineering services to Donahue and Associates in the amount of $164,360. Council Memo 161-24, award of professional services agreement for pre-treatment program assistance to Baxter and Woodman in the amount of $120,000. Council Memo 162-24, Award of Professional Services Agreement for the Phase 3 Engineering Services for the Chicago Street Streetscape, Jefferson and Cass, City Square and Water Main Improvements to V3 companies in an amount not to exceed $1,332,252. Council Memo 163-24, 2024 Advanced Traffic Management System, Phase A Network Switch Materials Purchase Order Number 1, to Sentinel Technologies in the amount of $125,719.37. Council Memo 164-24 approved the purchase of five under deck systems for the utilities department from Boss Industries LLC in the amount of $129,598.51. Council Memo 165-24 request to purchase five police units for the Joliet Police Department two from Ron Tirapelli Ford for $88,944 and three Ziegler Auto Group for $86,754.09. Council Memo 166-24, <coughs> Amendment Number 1 for the 2024 Sanitary Sewer Investigation and Rehabilitation Program, PSA, to RJN Group in the amount of $22,560. Council Memo 167-24, change order number three for the 2022 electrical maintenance assistance contract to Van Mac Electric in the amount of $15,707.39 and payment request number eight in the amount of $21,771.42. It's recommended Council Memos 153-24 through 167-24 be approved. Is there a motion to approve all said consent agenda items? So moved. Second. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. <clears throat> Councilman Hug. Before I vote, I did, I did want to take a moment to, to <coughs> identify that we have not one, not two, but three representatives of these three companies that took the time out to, to show up here. That is so old school that somebody appreciates doing business with somebody, in this case, the city of Joliet. 
that they actually show up to the to, to, to the uh, formal approval. So thanks, guys, for for coming in. Appreciate it. Aye. Councilwoman Abara. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Cardenas. Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Under agenda items, Council Memo 169-24, award of contract for the East Side Wastewater Treatment Plant MCC replacement in the alternate water supply project to MJ Electric in the amount of $4,480,000 and award of construction services agreement to Strand Associates in the amount of $434,200. It's recommended Council Memo 169-24 be approved. So moved. Second. Fine. <clears throat> Fine. Again, yeah, just a, um, as always, like to, to have just a uh, brief discussion about this, just for the people watching at home. Um, so we could, uh, Allison, we talked about this at, at the committee level. That um, so this the uh, the motor control centers have have not been replaced since I think you said sometime in the late '80s. Um, so that puts us at about 40 years. So while this seems like uh, like a big ticket item, you know, over four million dollars uh, for a single contract. You know, what can we expect the, the lifespan of, of this replacement to be? And then just briefly, what does it cover? Why is it necessary that, that we replace this? Yeah, so this contract is actually two uh, separate projects that we bid together so we can get the best pricing since they're uh, very similar in the contractor who would do the work. So half of the project is, as you said, the motor control centers at the east side treatment plant, which were originally installed in 1989. And the motor control centers, they really are the brains that control all the motors. And we have a lot of equipment at the plant, and it's critical that those operate correctly so that we can um, meet our permit requirements and, and treat the wastewater. And so I do said that these ones we've had now have lasted about 40 years, so it's expected that that would be the, the life of the, the new installation. The second half of the project is related to the alternative water source program and our SCADA system for the, the water supply. Um, right now, the way our SCADA works is for our current operation um, with our multiple wells and um, distributed system. But once we bring in like Michigan water, we'll need a, a different uh, SCADA control uh, system. So we are doing that work now um, so that we'll be ready when we implement the new water source uh, in 2030. So when, when we consider that, you know, this equipment is going to be in place for possibly 40 years, you know, the $4 million price tag doesn't seem like so much anymore when you stretch it out over, over the lifespan. So thank you for that. In 40 years, it'll be 10 times as much. Yeah. <laughs> thank it was, you. It was motion and seconded to approve Council Memo 169-24. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilwoman Abara? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Cardenas? Aye. Councilman Clement? Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. Under ordinances, Council Memo 171-24, ordinances associated with Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Brandon Amendment Subdivision. This includes an ordinance approving the annexation of 10 acres west of Brandon Road, an ordinance approving the classification of 10 acres west of Brandon Road to ITC Intermodal Terminal Industrial Park Zoning, an ordinance approving the reclassification of 5.225 acres northwest of Brandon Road from ITA Intermodal Terminal Intermodal Terminal to ITB Intermodal Terminal Transportation Equipment Zoning, and reclassification of 7.615 acres from ITC Intermodal Terminal Industrial Park to ITB Intermodal Terminal Transportation Equipment Zoning. An ordinance approving the reclassification of 15.936 acres located west of Brandon Road from ITA Intermodal Terminal to Intermodal Terminal to ITB Intermodal Terminal Transportation Equipment Zoning and a reclassification of 26.684 acres from ITC Intermodal Terminal Industrial Park to ITB Intermodal Terminal Transportation Equipment Zoning an ordinance approving the reclassification of 8.187 acres west of Brandon Road from ITA Intermodal Terminal Intermodal Terminal to ITC Intermodal Terminal Industrial Park Zoning, and an ordinance approving the vacation of a portion of Schweitzer Road west of the Union Pacific Railroad, an ordinance approving the vacation of abandoned Brandon Road north of Schweitzer Road, 
an ordinance approving the revised preliminary <coughs> plat of Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Brandon Amendment Subdivision, an ordinance approving the final plat of Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Subdivision Phase 25, and an ordinance approving the recording plat at the Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Subdivision Phase 25. It's recommended said ordinances be adopted. Mayor, I'd like to table this. Second. Make a you want to make a motion on that then, Jane? Make a motion to table Council Member 171 24. Do you have a specific date for tasting? Indefinitely. Okay. Do we need a more <coughs> fine time? I would defer to legal, but I would recommend that we have a specific date for tabling. We have to table it for a finite time. In two weeks, right. four weeks. Did you say? Finite. Finite. Wow. We have to decide. <clears throat> All right. Well, Mayor, how long should we? Well, we can go four weeks, and if we want to do um, something in between. A month. Okay. Is that six <clears throat> days, thirty days, sixty days? We'll do it in increments of meetings. So whenever the meeting after the next first meeting in May. May seventh would be the date for the okay. first meeting in May. That's a month. Okay. That's four weeks. All right. All right. So four weeks. <clears throat> been motion and seconded to table council memo 171-24 ordinances associated with center for <coughs> intermodal center at joliet brandon amendment subdivision to the may 7th council meeting councilman hug aye councilwoman abara aye councilman mudrin aye councilwoman coleman aye councilwoman reardon aye councilman cardenas aye councilman clement aye councilman guerrero aye mayor darcy aye Motion carried. Council Memo 171-24 is tabled to the May 7th, 2024 Council meeting. Under resolutions, Council Memo 173-24, a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between Heritage Corridor Convention and Visitors Bureau and the City of Joliet for installation of Route 66 interpretive signs and objects at Route 66 Park at Broadway Street, Green Lake. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So, second. The motion seconded to approve. Councilwoman Abara. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Cardenas. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. <coughs> Council Memo 174 24 was pre previously raised <coughs> on the agenda. Council Memo 175-24, resolution accepting license agreement from Forest Preserve District of Will County for the Parkview North 2024 Water Main Improvement Project. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. second. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Quillman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Cardenas. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilwoman Abara. Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 176-24, resolution declaring certain city of Joliet property is surplus. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Ten motion seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Cardenas. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilwoman Abara. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 177-24, a resolution appropriating Rebuild Illinois funds for the 2024 Advanced Traffic Management System Phase A Network Switch Materials Purchase <coughs> Order Number 1 in the amount of $125,719.37. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Mayor, can I say something? Greg, and you can back me up on this. I, this is a small purchase comparatively, <laughs> but this is upgrading and bringing us to, into the new uh, era where our traffic control devices, as far as um, digitally, <clears throat> will be controlled from City Hall, from a, a, a single place, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And that means anything that's not a hardware problem there's no longer having to go out there. We can fix that here. That's correct. So um, this will give us the advantage of having one centralized location. We're not going to have all our traffic signals on there to start, but we're working towards that. We'll have a good number. But it'll do things um, uh, like when a, a, a signal goes on the flash for whatever reason, 
you know, those automated system, our electricians can get a notification via text or email instead of waiting for someone to report it or the police report it, so they'll get immediate notification, things like that. So it's, it's really bringing um, modern standards to our uh, and sometimes you might even have something that's actually a computer based, a software based problem that can be fixed remotely. That's correct. Yeah. Which means we don't have to wait to, you know, send the police out to put up horses, wait a couple hours to, you know, uh, you know, so I just wanted to make that clear. Even though it's a relatively small purchase, maybe I have a boring life. It's a pretty exciting uh, advancement in our, in our signal control division. It is. This uh, purchase will allow us to get uh, ahead of some of the lead times on, on material procurement. And then when we actually do some additional work, we'll have the material in hand to get the Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> Motion seconded to approve Council Memo 177 24. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Cardenas? Aye. Councilman Clement? Aye. Councilman Guerrero? Aye. Councilman Hogg? Aye. Councilwoman Abara? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Mayor Darcy? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 178-24, a resolution requesting approval to authorize a representative to enter into joint participation agreements with the state of Illinois. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. So motion seconded to approve. Councilman Cardenas. Aye. Councilman Clement. Aye. Councilman Guerrero. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilwoman Abara. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Mayor Darcy. Aye. Motion carried. Next to the city manager's report. Yeah, over the last two weeks, um, I've had the privilege of attending a number of uh, events that uh, were um, important for the city and some of the, the issues that we're facing. Um, we attended the Chamber's March member luncheon where IDOT Transportation Secretary Omar Osman presented. I attended with both um, Councilwoman Quillman and Councilman Mudrin, so thank you for joining us, along with um, a number of my senior staff, um, Greg and Chris, our IT director and public works director, Corporation Council Chris and Krista. It was a good opportunity for me to have some FaceTime with Omer again. Um, as, as much as I can have FaceTime with him, I try because of all the issues that we are, do address with IDOT and all the you know highways that go through our town and the truck traffic that we have. So it was a lovely luncheon and a good opportunity to get some FaceTime and get to speak with him directly. Um, I also attended with Alderman or with Councilman Guerrero the beam signing ceremony at uh, the prison on March 22nd. That was uh, very eye-opening for me. I've never been to the prison before and it was remarkable. I mean, walking in, I could just, even though it's, you know, dilapidated now, you can kind of see what it once was and how they're really improving it. Um, and just the heart behind all of that. There were a number of other um, leaders throughout the community that attended as well. Um, and just some of the things that they've been finding in the prison and uh, they have a specialist there who is cataloging all these things. I mean, clothes that some of the prisoners wore to play basketball, to play baseball, mattresses. I mean, it's remarkable really what they've been able to um, uncover. And so that really opened my eyes to the, impor the importance of the history there, which I know is important to the community as well. Um, and finally, uh, Councilwoman Ibera and I joined um, the new deputy city manager and slash city clerk um, and swearing the officer swearing in ceremony on March 27th with uh, Chief Evans. We had two new, um, two new police officers sworn in. So we've got a long way to go, but um, you know, everyone counts and they were really excited, the two new officers to be a part of JPD and it's just really fun to celebrate with them and their families. Um, so I would encourage any of you to come along on those because um, it was it was really great to be a part of it. So that's it for the last couple of weeks. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is public comments. Is there anyone that would like to speak under public comments this evening? Seeing none. Next is mayor and council comments. Okay. Yeah, I just want to bring a few things uh, up. <clears throat> you know, 
I always want to keep things in the, the front burner, right? Because otherwise, if you don't keep bringing it up, it, we kind of just forget about it. I want to continue to work with the uh, parking meters and the parking deck downtown, figure out what we're going to do with that. Um, we did get the report back. I'm not big in the city owning uh, decks. I think uh, a private person or company should own them. But, and there's pros and cons to all that, but that's just my, my belief. Um, Chief Carey, you want to talk just briefly on the uh, Hamas and Jefferson? Uh, we had a homeless problem over there, all kinds of debris. Uh, uh, business owners were concerned. And if you want to just briefly address it, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. After uh, the last council meeting, we had our community risk reduction team go back out there, make sure everybody was gone. Everybody was gone from the site. Then they did find out who the owner of the lot was, got in contact with them. They reached out. Um, they got their maintenance personnel out there, and that Saturday they cleared that whole <coughs> lot up at Ames and Jefferson. So all the people are gone. All the debris is gone, so that is completely clear now. Thank you. Yep, Thank, you. Thank you. I also want to uh, bring back to light the sidewalk issue in the city. Um, I know there were some issues in the, uh, previously. I'd like to bring that back up again and see if we can kickstart that that project. Um, I know we didn't want to pay for, well, anyway, it was at a committee level, I believe, Larry, and I'd like to somehow bring it back and see if we can get this thing going and kicked off the ground. I know that's a, one of the number one complaints, number two complaints that, that I hear. Um, also, there's been, since Joliet Street, uh, there's under, it's under construction. The traffic at the bridges, especially when a barge goes up, um, I don't know if we can get a whole IDOT or we can have our engineers <coughs> take a look. I think we have to sink all these lights to get people across. They need more time to, to go east and west. I've had numerous people call me about it, um, and it's just becoming a problem. I think everybody here witnesses the, uh, the issues there. You know, barge goes up, you just cannot, cannot get over. The lights aren't staying green long enough. And you know it's very complicated there when you're going over, all those lights have to be in sync. So that, that's just that. Um, I want to bring up economic development. You know, it, it was in the paper. It's, it's, it's not good news, Dixon Hawk. I'm not blaming one person or a group of people. I'm just making my comments. You know, we have to get ultra aggressive. It happened in the past. We can do it again. We cannot have businesses uh, leaving. I know it, it, it's not always up, up to us, but we can be ultra aggressive reaching out to people like calling group and things going on at the mall and the bridge and the courthouse and Harris Casino. Um, you know, there, there's three options here. We owe, we, you know, our budget's very, very big, right? It's $500 million, I believe, or a little less. That's a big number. If we don't have, and I'm being serious here, if we don't have economic development, there's two other options there. Raise taxes, which I'm not in favor for. This is like serious stuff, raise taxes, we have we cut our services and we do layoffs at the city of Joliet. That's what we're facing here. We have to get so serious at this. I think it's very very important. It needs to be number one on our priority. So those are my comments. Um, so as our city manager mentioned, uh, we were both at the beam signing for the whole Joliet prison. Uh, been I've I've been there a number of times, uh, you know, over the years, but uh, had not been there in. in uh, I think over a year, so to see the new collections um, towards the back of the campus was, was very impressive. Um, I made mention of, of this that, you know, you see this this facility of, of these huge stone walls and you get inside and it feels very industrial, very cold, um, a lot of metal and stone, and then you get back into, into the room and you see a pile of neatly folded blankets and reminds you that, you know, that there were people here, right, that this was... Uh, uh, it, it adds an element of, of humanity to what is otherwise very stark and kind of rigid uh, environment. Uh, so al always nice to see the, the progress that's happening there at the site. Uh, look forward to, to what comes in the future. Uh, I want to agree with Councilman Clement that I'd like to, to follow up with, you know, the parking study. Uh, I think we've all been calling for it for as long as I've been in and long before that. Uh, that you know we needed a study, so we got that completed. So now you know we need to, need to follow up with that and determine what direction we're going to take uh, downtown parking because that's going to be essential in, in how we develop you know the economic development and the small businesses in in our downtown area. So we need to have a sense of, of what is going to happen there. And I mean that's one of the recurring questions that I'm sure that not just myself but all of the council members here get uh, from our residents over and over. Um, 
and you know, uh, one more thing. One more thing I had. What was? Uh, you know, I, I I think that's that's probably the most pressing one right now for all the for events me. you attended. All the events I attended. Yeah, there's uh, too too many to count. <laughs> um, but I think we were there. We we, we did go to the uh, the history on wheels uh, fundraiser. Uh, so again, you know, best of uh, of luck to Mr. Johnson. Uh, he was, he was well attended. He mentioned that he had to even, you know, turn some people away. So there's a lot of interest in, in redeveloping the, the Cassidy House. Um, so again, you know, best wishes to him and, and we want to see it be successful and looking forward to the groundbreaking on uh, June 19th. <clears throat> as far as um, Councilman Clement's uh, comments on economic development, I'm going to reserve final comments on it. I do not disagree with them. We've all talked about this already over the last several weeks, but what we've read in the paper, I'm looking into it. I know the mayor's looking into it, as is the city manager. And what we read in the paper may not be completely accurate in the whole story. At least I don't know that for sure yet, so I'm going to reserve. But you are right, and we all are on the same page that yep. we need to. We're going to, we're going to be looking into this. On a lighter note, the city manager Beth brought up the prison and mentioned something about baseball uniforms and things. Well, one of those. Tell me something I, I wouldn't have guessed about you moments for me. I don't know why. It just made me think of this. Back in the mid-80s to late 80s, to supplement my income as a college student, I umpired baseball, including at Stateville and at the farm. Oh, wow. Yes. Now, the, the farm is off a division, and it's a minimum security prison that they earned. And Stateville, I don't need to explain Stateville to you. There were no games played at the Joliet prison, even though it was still open. It had turned into, I think at that time, into a processing center for the most part. So, two takeaways from doing it. I learned to say it was very interesting. First of all, I met Mr. T's brother who worked there <laughs> as a guard. Um, number two, all of Stateville's games were home games, okay? <laughs> the farm, they traveled. And number three, the instructions I got the first time I went out to do it. And, and you gotta remember, 1985, 87, $150 to do two baseball games, and they were limited to 45 minutes apiece. That was big money back then. That's why, mm -hmm. you know, I did, you know, had done it. And the instructions I got when you got into the baseball field, there is a complete, there used to be, baseball field in Stateville. Complete baseball field. Grass, infield, the whole thing. And uh, number one, they said you're here to call ball strike, strike safe and outs. Any arguing between the guards and, and the players, not you. Number two, you see that red light in left field where that sliding security door is. If that goes off and you hear the sirens, you've got about 60 seconds to get to that sliding door before it seals off the unit if there's a problem on the field. So, interesting, you made me think of this tonight when you brought up the baseball uniforms, uh, what college kids will do to make a few bucks, right? <laughs> so, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. <clears throat> so, we have a very important meeting in District 5 on Thursday at All Nations God and Christ Church. So, it's thir this Thursday, April 4th at 507 Water Street in Joliet from 6 to 8 with attorney Lauren Ryan, the Carter Realty Group, and this is going to be regarding the IDOT project and IED relocations, or otherwise known as victims of eminent domain. The goal of the town hall is to provide context regarding the information that the residents have received from IDOT, the relocation project. So it will be a town hall. Will County Board Member Denise Winfrey will be on the um, panel. Gwen Omar will be on the panel. The mayor will be on the panel and myself. So we're hoping that everyone that is going to be relocated will join us this Thursday, All Nations God and Christ Church from 6 to 8. Then also another very important event, Three Rivers Association of Realtors Home Expo is happening this Friday from 3 to 7 and Saturday from 10 to 2. That is at the Renaissance Center in downtown Joliet, 214 North Ottawa. Do not miss this free event. It will be anything you need to know or learn about buying a home, building gener generational wealth, different funding <laughs> options. There will be people there for wealth management, remodeling, home services, real estate, and lending. And the first 100 guests each day will receive a chance to win $10,000. So with those two things being very important happening, I also wanted to say that um, the Saturday before Easter, 
I was driving down North Rainer and there was a pothole so big that my entire tire actually went in the pothole. And it looked like because of the rain, it just, some of the um, fill had eroded away and I didn't know what to do. And I just thought of people just popping tires all day on Easter. I called Councilwoman Cloman early on Saturday um, for some advice and she told me exactly what to do call the fire department uh non-emergency i'm sorry police, police department, department. non-emergency yeah, police and department. they came out and put a cone and then it was taken care of very promptly on monday but i just want to say that our police department and our fire department do so much more than just what we traditionally think their jobs are every time there is a home a homeless encampment or you know people in crisis, it's our fire department and our police department that's our first line of you know, help and they've never turned anyone away. So I wanna thank them very much for that as Jan Coleman did not turn me away and I'm sure she was busy cooking, but I appreciate her um, advice for that. And then one last thing, I wanted to know both of you would schedule meetings with us and Jane. If Jane needs some direction on that park on 53, then she needs to reach out to us so we can have some of those meetings. Yeah, sure. That I can help schedule those. Say. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. I have nothing that was already said. All right. <laughs> I guess I'm up, better up. Maybe, did you keep your umpire thing? We could put it in the museum. <laughs> Maybe I'm in a picture. Maybe go find a picture on the floor of the prison. So yes, I also attended the History on Wheels and that place was packed. So it's a big interest oh, for the Cassidy Museum. And also the Spanish Community Center had an event uh, the following Saturday, in which also was very well attended. <coughs> so um, today I happened to catch Jeopardy and we have made national news, people. Here's the question. Once the site of a state prison, this city near Chicago has an economy today based on tourism and casinos. And the guy goes, Juliet! <laughs> no hesitation. I'm like, we finally made the big time. <laughs> there you go, gosh. <laughs> so I had to share that with you. I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> and that's all I have. Just be well and stay safe, people. Thank you. And if you see something, say something. If you're out shopping, since this child abuse thing is awareness, wear the blue, of course. But if you're in a store, if you're out and people are just not being well, just say something. If not to them, call the authorities because <coughs> there's more going on than we even know. And it's these little ones that are suffering. So that's all I have. Thank you. So once again, I'm very excited. <laughs> but this is tomorrow. We'll be attending the um, 100 Club of Illinois annual Valor Awards. And um, in their words, we recognize the courageous ones, those who go above and beyond what is expected in their duties without regard to personal safety and all in the name of protecting their community. And one of our very own is going to be honored tomorrow. It's Captain Matt Hornbuckle of the Joliet Fire Department. And so congratulations to him. But I also wanna say thank you to all of our first responders that don't always get that recognition, but are out there doing it every single day. So thank you to the police and to the fire for all you do for us every single day. And that's it. Thank you. We saved that for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> everybody took everything I was gonna say pretty much. Um, I do wanna remind everybody though on Friday, April 5th, that we do wanna wear blue. We have to stop out child abuse. It's oh. something that doesn't belong in our world. Um, one other comment I want to make on March 20th and 21st, four of us went to um, Washington, D.C. to try and get some money, some grant money for our water project. We, uh, it was uh, Hugh O'Hara, myself, Allison, and C.C. DeBold from Shorewood. We met in uh, that day and a half window, we met Senators Durbin, Senators Duckworth, Congresswoman Underwood, Congressman Foster, Congressman Jackson. Total Info Local Weather. She's so articulate on this stuff, I have to take my hat off to her. She did such a great job of bringing this information that I know that we're gonna garner some, some really good help from this, some grant money. I know that I think we're asking for five million right now. <clears throat> so I really think that um, and we came up with a different finance plan that can help some of the, some of the project uh, 
over this next long period. But um, it was a great trip, and I want to give Allison uh, a lot of respect for what she did and her articulation on this project. So thank you. That's all I've got. Mayor, can I clarify something? Sure. I would feel bad if I didn't. <clears throat> in the story I told <clears throat> in my walk down nostalgia, I mentioned, I think you all heard me, and I, I didn't detail it, that I had, and it's true, he had an opportunity to meet Mr. T's brother. He was not an inmate. He was a lieutenant. He was a guard at State Bell, and he was heading towards retirement back then, and he's the one that gave me the safety advice. So he was a guard on, on staff there. And you're safely here. He did a good job. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second to motion, second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned.